Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Jess Marshall Podcast. This week on Jess Marshall Podcast number 70, we've got Steve Black, who is a motivational speaker. He is a salesmanship expert. He's straight out of Florida. We're lucky to have him here in Richardson, Texas. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Jess Marshall Podcast. Wow. Mark that, else. Swipe. Bring it. Steve from Florida. Welcome to Texas, brother. Hey, thank you for having me. No doubt. How, long, how often are you here? I've seen a lot on your Instagram. You're here pretty often. You know, I'm based in Florida. I, I train internationally. I've done events in Sydney, Australia, London. Good day, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh, boy, it's great. I wish I could go back I soon. Bet. It's awesome. Yeah, a long flight, though. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. You got to get one of those uh, Got to get one of those in the cabin where you can lay all the way down, right? Oh, got to go first class. No the doubt. Pod's, the pod's what it's about. What uh, what got you into speaking? You know, really passion. I started in uh, real estate. I'd be going to all these. I got fired as a realtor, if you could imagine. I can't. No, it's it's impossible, and I was that bad. And uh, <laughs> when I was cleaning out my desk, you know, I'm 21 years old. The, the top agent came to me and said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm a big guy. I could go be a bouncer in a nightclub. I could work on a fishboat in Alaska. She goes, I got a better plan. And she talked me into going to see a man named Tom Hopkins, who had written the book called how to master the art of closing. Uh, he was one of Zig Ziglar's good friends. And uh, I, could, he, I said, is it free? She's like, no, it costs 500 bucks. I'm like, I can't afford that. And she looked me in the eyes and said, if your car broke down and it cost $500, could, would you figure out a way? I go, I'd figure out a way. She goes, why? I go, I use it. She goes, you're gonna use this the rest of your life. And, and, and it was the m best decision I ever made. I ended up going to this event. I met successful people. I learned that you just can't ask people, what do you think? You there's, a, there's a technique to closing. And I came out of there, and I lit up the board. And when I was 27, uh, I ended up um, gravitating towards the speaking business. I was picked up by Tom himself. And then in, uh, when I was 29, I started working with Brian Tracy, the great author. And, yeah. and it, was, it opened up a world of opportunities for us. So she recognized something in you that maybe you were uh, – may, may, was it the processes in the back end of the real estate transaction that probably bored the hell out of you and you were just – you just couldn't stay passionate about it? And lack of discipline. You know, mm. I was like every other small business person out there. Nobody's watching my hours. I'm not punching in. I'd show up at 11. I, I, I'd, I'd go have lunch. I'd, I'd come back at 3. I'd move a few papers, tell my gal that I was working. I was playing. You know, my job was to go out there and talk to homeowners, look for prospects, and I was afraid of rejection. And, you know, it took that wake up to get fired. Like Tony Robbins says, you're motivated by pain or you're motivated by pleasure. You know, if they didn't bring in a new broker that said, hey, we're getting rid of the bottom five and he's the first to go, I probably still would have been floating around. But luckily, you know, I was motivated by that. What was bad became good. And uh, I, I made, from that day forward, I made sales and marketing my hobby. And I've been spending, the, I spent the last three decades helping other small business owners understand that if you're really good at marketing, you're really good at sales, you've recession proofed your business. Uh, that's amazing. How important uh, do you think it is as a small business owner to be passionate about what you do? And when I ask that, I preface it by saying when people ask me why I started the podcast, I say, well, it was my response to social distancing, first of all. But also, I'm passionate about meeting people who are also passionate because right. everything runs on energy. And when you're around people who are just beaten down by life and they can't, it's just so oh, right. poor me. It's very energy draining. But when you meet someone and they're passionate, it's this it's this high you can't explain when you right. exchange that energy and that passion. How important is it is it to to you when you talk to these small business owners who bring you in to pump up their staff to make sure that the leader of the captain of the ship is passionate? Yeah, you know, I mean, passion's everything, and they say when you really find what you love to do, you know, you'll never work another day in your life and you know that happened for me with the speaking and coaching business I love helping people I love inspiring people and I love marketing so it was the per it was a perfect storm uh, you know then then you find people that are entrepreneurs or, or professionals or salespeople I work with a lot of real estate agents you know and that's uber competitive that's a business where 10% of the people are making 90% of the money uh, 
prior to coming over here, I was with a group of loan officers, and they're like, hey, we've never had to sell. You know, I got in the business in 2014. Rates have been dropping. Prices have been rising. People wanted what we had. And now we're back to the situation where we're we going to drum up business. So, you know, finding passion what you're, you know, with, with some of these people, that they got it. You know, they want to build a brand. They, they want to showcase what they have. They want to bring value to the marketplace, some things we'll be talking about, leveraging social media, video. But I think passion's passion is really important and yeah. uh, if somebody's lucky enough, lucky enough to fall into a line of work where they can use their skills maybe it's a commission situation maybe they have a chance to you know get a piece of the business partner with somebody um, you know maybe that'll motivate and motivate them and help them find it but I've seen people you know do you know I had a guy come out to work at my patio you know and he just did excellent work and you know I, I, I recognize where he could have shortcut it and he says no I'm, this is my job this is my reputation and you know even though he, he was passionate but he was you know laying bricks but you know he looked at it as hey I'm creating an, a beautiful house not just laying bricks yeah he's an artist right yeah. he was yeah. he took pride in his work That's like it. you you know like you do right. um, what was was it that clicked for you when you went to that seminar? You scrounged together five hundred dollars. You go. You said, "Did you recognize at that point that you were undisciplined and that you had to shore that up?" Or when you started down the speaking business path, <laughs> were they like, "Got to be up. Got to be self disciplined. Got to be getting your fitness in." How did that work out for you? No, it's it, you know it started that day, and and you know did I realize it? I knew it. You know, people are looking. Hey, you look good in your suit. Hey, you're a nice. You're a sharp kid. And I'm thinking, I'm disorganized. I can't find my my keys, I, you know, my time management's horrible. I think most people know their worst enemy isn't down the street at another company. It's in the mirror every day. And, you know, discipline is literally the bridge between where you're at and where you're going to be. And, you know, it's developed over time. And uh, I'm sure you could go back a few decades and think about who you were then and who you are now. And, you know, along the way, good habits, you know, keeping a list, you know, as electronics came into play, you know, working your database, being consistent in your marketing efforts. You know, successful people are the ones that are out there doing what they need to do, even when they don't feel like it. And and for salespeople, a lot of times that's the prospecting and marketing effort. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's hard. Like you said, it was not pleasant for you to go out and face that rejection, right? If you got ten no's in a row, maybe five yeses in a row are coming. But that those no's yeah. are tough when you first get into a business like real estate sales. Yeah. Any any of it, yeah, sure. You know, the, you know, the reality is, you know, and, and one of the things that sticks out from that first event that I went to 30 years ago, you know, the speaker said, look, whatever business you're in, whether you're a roofer, you're a real estate agent, you're a loan officer, you're an attorney, you know, you're doing certain things that, that sometimes seem like they're getting you nowhere. Let's say you're making phone calls off of a list you have or you're calling your database. You might have to make 20 phone calls to make one sale. Well, if you're making, let's say, $2,000 a sale, every time you get a no, it's worth 100 bucks. So instead of looking as rejection, when somebody's rude to you, thanks for the 100 thanks for the 100 because literally that's what you're moving towards. Yeah, that's awesome, right? Reframing everything mindset, so it's about yeah. mindset. Things are happening for me, not to me. All those good right. things that we certainly hear from or say from stages, right. right? But it's putting those into practice. What's your morning routine like? Ha. Yeah, funny you ask. So um, at, along the way, I, I saw a great uh, speaker. We're sitting here in Texas right now. Well, he was from Texas, and he was one of uh, friends of Tom Hopkins and Brian Tracy, who I later worked for. His name was Zig Ziglar, and he's a very well-known speaker. And, Just a uh, bit. Yeah. At, at, well, you'd be surprised, you know, the younger generation, yeah. how many don't know these names. But, you know, if anybody's listening and they're in their 50s or 60s or 70s, their ears are going to perk up. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and, and hopefully so, along the way, somebody handed you a book or, you know, gave you those audios or dragged you by your ear to one of these events. You're like, this is good stuff. Yeah. But, but uh, Zig taught me what was called the hour of power. And I've shortened it for my students. If anybody looks up the hashtag, uh, hashtag 59 minutes to terrific, I tell everybody, I give credit where credit's due with Zig, and I say, I save you one minute. But basically it's this, start your day with something positive. Don't lay there in bed, jump out of bed, say something to the universe, like this is gonna be my best year ever, today's gonna be terrific. Second thing, grab water. You know, at one point in my life, I weighed like 330. I weigh 260. I'm, I'm 55 years old. I got great energy. People say, hey, you know, what's your secret? I tell them, start your day with water. 
I used to drink Diet Coke. Going from Diet Coke to water, 60 pounds. Third thing in the morning, wh whether I feel like it or not, exercise. If I have a 6 a.m. gig I got to be at, I'm getting up at 4 a.m. and I'm working out for 30 minutes to 60 minutes. And I tell people, start small. Do a slow walk for three weeks to become your routine. You know, and if you live in a bad neighborhood, walk fast, but don't, break the excuses, break the good intentions, and go out there and do it. And then I say, when you get back to your house, condo, in my situation, a lot of times, hotel rooms, you know, then it's time to read a chapter in a book. The one thing you can't do in the morning is touch your phone. As much as I teach the high tech stuff, the minute you touch that phone, and as an entrepreneur, I know you can relate to this, yeah. you know, 7 a.m. turns into 10 a.m. You're putting out email fires, you're sending emails, and now you're not taking care of you. And the most important thing that I do every day, and, I, and this, this has literally saved my life, is I, I, I keep a gratitude journal. And I've went through, I filled up about 50 of these notebooks over the last 30 years since I learned this. And I write down three things I'm grateful for every day. And, you know, some days are tougher than others. And I lost the love of my life to brain cancer. And what saved me, you know, in that period was that I had been journaling for 25 years. You know, I'd learned it in an event where I went there to learn how to make money and sell. And I learned about journaling from uh, a guy named Jim Rohn, who was also at one of these events. He was a speaker from Idaho. And he says, are you keeping a journal? I said, a diary? I said, I'm too busy. He goes, kid, life goes by quick. I go, you, I know you're on top now, but you, you write it down because you're going to have tough times. And boy, was he right. When I got hit from right field that, that my gal had brain cancer, they gave her six months to live, and I wanted to go, why me? I got out my books for the last 30 years, and I looked at them, and I saw where God had gotten me from point A to point B, and I kept her alive for four years. She eventually passed, but... But that gave me the strength. And so I tell people, you know, keep a journal, t teach, teach your kids to keep journals. I've been giving out journals to young kids for 25 years. I mean, imagine an eight-year-old opening up a, a journal at, at the holidays. Like, what a look of disappointment. He's like, Uncle Steve, I want video game. I go, I'll buy you a video game, but I want you to write down three things you're grateful for. Like what? I go, you're, are you grateful for your house? Yeah. What about your mom? I love my mom. What about your teacher? I love it. I go, write it down. That's easy. I go, well, just do it for three weeks and I'll buy you, buy you two video games. But what I'm trying to get them to do is I'm trying to get them to uh, create the habit of being grateful. And, and after 25 years of doing this, I see the kids that are actually doing it. They're now grown men. And, and I see a difference in the ones that did it versus the ones that didn't. Do you see that, especially since we have these now, right? Yeah. Our lives are lived inside the box, really, right. Right. All, almost all the time, that we just lose the forest for the trees. So that's where we just don't realize how good we have it. Right. And maybe it does take something traumatic like losing the love of your life to something that's totally uncontrollable and unexpected right. to bring out, man, I just thank you for this weather today. Thank you for three square meals. Right. Thank you for a good pair of wheels, That's whatever what it about. is. Thank you for your health. You know, I mean, I do these big events. You know, I had one lady, she stands out at me. She was negative Nelly. She didn't want to be there. You know, she all she was focused on was like, 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 you know, loss, not gain. You know, she was didn't have a scarcity mentality. She had a scarcity mentality instead of an abundance mentality. And she looks at me seriously and says, what if I'm not grateful for anything? And I looked at her and I said, that's the day you need it the most. You know, it's when you think you aren't grateful that you got to look around and say, are you healthy? You know, do you live in a great state? Is the weather good? And I know it sounds corny, but the reality is that's what life's about. And it's about these little victories. And, and then when you're always asking yourself, can you improve? And that's the journaling part. You know, what do I do in the morning? What do you do in the evening? Well, in the evening, what good happened? What could I have done better? You know, if you mentioned striking out, you know, if a salesperson goes out there, he goes on 10 calls, he doesn't sell anything, but he's got to ask himself, did I have a good conversation? Was I in rapport? What could I have done differently? You know, could I have said, well, the next step is do this instead of saying, what do you think? And if they're willing to fine tune that radio dial, like a plane leaving Miami going to New York, that pilot's always adjusting that thing. That thing's off track 99% of the time because of wind gust, air streams, but the pilot's just making little adjustments. And so many people, you know, they graduate high school, they never, they never read another book. You know, they no. think it's done. And, 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 and you talk about passion. My passion's helping people and my passion's growing, my, growing myself. You know, learning. Yeah. I mean, we, we were talking offline about COVID, you know. I mean, you know, my business, gone. I was one of the top. I worked hard to be one of the five top speakers in the world. 
and then all of a sudden that you know you can't go and meet with the person face to face. You know what did you what did you do there? What how did you pivot? Almost immediately, all your gigs are just gone, like right? like dust. Oh, what, I you know pe- what'd you do? Big names that you've see, you, you've seen and that you're familiar with. They were firing their staff. They were letting people go. But I know that success is more like a river than a lake. You know, mm. you got to be flexible. You got to have that goal. But you know, my goal helping people. So. Um, we, we made the adjustment to delivering the content online. We started doing webinars for sales teams. How what? fast are you on that? As soon as they say two weeks to, to, to flatten the <laughs> curve, how fast are you going, team, huddle, this is what we got to do? Could you see it coming? D- yeah. did, it, did it happen almost overnight like it did when we get the, the voices from on high that are saying, if you do this, it'll go away, so now you don't get to earn a living and all of that? What did you, what'd you do? Well, I, I, it, it, there was, you know, there was that, that that period where the wave has come in. Now you're getting to see it's like, you know, right now we just had the hurricane in Fort Myers. What 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 are we dealing with? Well, look, this is tour. We got to get this redone. Let's do this one better. But but the reality was. Um, when we we we, get, we do a lot of our business through conventions, through sales meetings, uh, you know, if I'm in a town like Dallas, you know, I'll stop by an office with 50 or 60 people. Well, obviously they weren't meeting, so we reached out to them. We said, well, we got an idea. Your people are at home. You're going to lose them. Let's fire up a webinar. Steve Black will get with them virtually. We'll do it via Zoom. You know, they're saying, what's Zoom? We say, we'll send you a password. We'll show you what it's about. Okay. Yeah, this looks great. Let's get an email out. And all of a sudden we had these webinars, these master classes with 50, 60, 100 people. And then they grew, you know, the word got out. It was a really good experience and became 200 people. And then, you know, at, on the back end, it was like, we want more of this. So we developed a, a program called the Social Media Success Series, which um, allowed us to deliver this world-class content that people used to, you know, have to come to Florida, sit in a hotel room for five days, you know, spend $5,000. And we were able to bring it to them at a fraction of that price. So what what's bad is good. And I think, it, you know, in life, every God will send you every opportunity in your life mm-hmm. gift wrapped in a problem. And, you know, most people don't have the attitude, the mindset to get through the gift wrapping to get to the opportunity. Wow. They get stuck in, oh, well, there's too many roofers in town or there's too uh-huh. many real estate agents. You know, they're on the golf course. They're seeing the obstacles. They're not seeing the fairway. Wow, man. Yeah. I can tell you've delivered that one a couple of times. Well, it- how, how poignant was it for you, pertinent to the, to the topic there, that you're going through the exact same thing that all these other salespeople are going through, and you're pivoting, you're getting them on Zoom, and you're like, okay, this is what you got to start doing. I'm doing it right now. We right. got to reach out and touch people virtually. Was it like, you know, clarity's going off in your mind, and you're just almost passing that like a conduit to these other people who are looking at you going, well, I was going to see you at a seminar in two weeks, but now we're online, and you're helping them convert the same concept to how they're going to reach out and touch their clientele. Was it just, I mean, it was just like a, this very fast delivery of the message as you're figuring it out you're passing it along to these realtors and service professionals at the same time you know you know i think so and again you know you have you have two groups of people the people that complain about things that's probably 80 or 90 percent oh oh me maybe more than that right <laughs> yeah and the, and you know like les brown said don't tell people about your problems because 80 percent of them that you tell about don't care the other ones are glad you have it right but you got all those people well I, you know i can't do good because it's covid they're the same people that couldn't do good because there were too, the market was too good. And then it's too bad. They're never going to do good. And then you got the other people like you, me, some of the top achievers that make that shift, make that adaption and say, okay, these are the cards I'm dealt. How am I going to overcome? You know, there's a wall. I got a choice. Either try to you know pop a hole in the wall, break the wall, or go over the wall. And, and that's a sign, sign of a successful person. They aren't stopped. You know, I'm playing golf. I'm a p- passionate golfer, not a very good one, but I have the opportunity to play with pros from time to time, playing celebrity uh, matches, played in the NFL charity tournament. And um, I remember I was up in Bandon Dunes, Oregon, this world-class golf course, and, and we're on this hole with the Pacific Ocean on the left. We got sand on the right. I looked at the pro. I said, I'll just meet you guys at the bottom. He says, get back up here. He says, I've seen you hit the ball. I go, no, I'm in over my head. He goes, look, Steve, 
Forget about the traps. Forget about the ocean. Look at the look at right here. That's the tiger line. I want you to land the ball right there. I got up there, closed my eyes, visualized, swung, and the ball landed about 250 yards out in the middle. And that's the same thing in life. Quit looking at the obstacles and ask yourself, how? When I was in a car with Brian Tracy taking the airport, I said, what's the most important thing that people could do for their mindset? He says, the word how. How can I achieve this? How can I overcome? How can I get the money? That's OPM, other people's money. How can I get the time? That's other people's time. We live in a world where there's virtual outsourcing. You know, the people are there. They're willing to work. You can find them. I run a big company with a few people. And the reason is, is because I could scale it up, scale it down through things like, um, you know, outsourcing and, and uh, uh, Upwork and some of the different sites that are out there. Where we can find people to do gig work, you know, and if they if we need staff to staff an event or we need graphic artists, we need a video guy, they're all available. And all you have to ask yourself is, how am I going to find these people? So if you're a person, say you're an entrepreneur, you feel stuck, you feel unmotivated, you don't feel like you have that mindset naturally. Like when you talk about mindset, it sounds like you were just born with it, right? I think a lot of people look at top flight athletes, top top flight executives, whoever, and just go, oh, well, they're just that way. And we know that that's not how it works. But as a person, I ask healthcare people who come wellness, fitness right. people, they come on the, on the podcast, how important is it just as a human to be your own best advocate? Man, I don't feel motivated right now. I don't care what I got to do. I got to go find a video on YouTube. I got to go find Steve Black. I got to go listen to something that a regular dude like Jess Marshall is saying to get myself up over the hump and just keep on going. So many people just get stuck and they, right. they don't, they don't even try to reach and it sounds like part of your passion, maybe your mission, maybe your purpose even, because you sound like you've got, like you run on some faith there too, is reaching down and pulling people up. Like, let's go. We can do better. Come on. Let's get up, get up here and let's, let's make this happen. Is that, right. is that the type of thing that you're doing at some of these events? I, I wouldn't say necessarily that because, you know, if, if, if there's, I, I'm a big guy. I could, I probably carry one or two people, but I can't carry four or five, right? right. You got to, you got people, motivation comes from within. And, you know, so the answer to your question, if somebody's stuck, what should they do? It's two things. It's it's get your goals in writing, step back. Most people do this at the New Year's. It's called a resolution. And then they forget about it. About three weeks later, they're back on their cigarettes. They're back, on, you know, eating their foods that they eat. They're back on the couch. They've given up on the workout program. But for that short window, they're motivated. So, so set goals, but okay. don't just do it once a year. Do it once a quarter. Do it once a, a month. Do it, do it every week. My routine Sunday night, I reflect on the week. What I do wrong? What could I do better? I teach people to plan out their work. I pe teach them to group their, group their appointments. You reached out to me. I don't know why I said yes. This is a real busy week for me. But I, you said, hey, I'm, I said, where are you at? You said Richardson. I, you said, can I, you do it on, on a Thursday? I said, no, but I'm, I'm, up, I'm about uh, eight miles away on, on a Wednesday. And then you said, well, listen, I really want this guy. Let's make it happen on Wednesday. And I teach people when they're running their sales appointment, let's say the roofing business. You know, you're driving from here to Richardson, all the way over to Euless, back over to Fort Worth. Some people this waste their day his driving. Metroplex. He knows his Metroplex right here. Check this right? guy out. Yeah. Because that, that's my life. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I'll, I'll camp out at a hotel over at the airport and I'll be shooting around. Sure. But when I have an opportunity to knock out two birds with one stone, you know, and, and grouping it, that's important. That's your time management, right? And then the other part is, is your positive self-talk. You know, like mm. one, one of the big, best things I could tell any business person is get good at remembering people's names. And what do you think they all say to themselves? Oh, I'm not good at remembering names. I always forget names. The minute I hear that, I say, let's stop. I want you to rephrase. I want you to say, that isn't like me. I usually remember names. Mm. I learned that from Michael Jordan. I was doing a consulting project with the Bulls, 1996. Best basketball team in the in the universe, right? No doubt. And 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 I'm helping them with their marketing. They did not have an issue selling tickets, <laughs> right. but the GM says to me, he "Goes, you want to meet Michael?" I'm like, "Why do you think I took the game?" That Reinsdorf. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, right? Yeah. Anyway, so he walks me into the gym, and it's about 4 p.m. They have a 7:30 game. There, the, Michael's the only in, uh, bull in the in the in the gym with two guys throwing them basketballs back. I said, "Where are the rookies?" He says, "They don't officially have to be here till five. Michael's always here at four. So we got. I'm about six six. He's about six six. And you know, I'm looking him in the eye. They introduced me. I said, "Mike, I got one question for you. I've never seen you go into a slump. What do you say when you miss a shot?" 
He goes, I've been interviewed a thousand times. Nobody's ever asked me that. But what I say to myself is that isn't like me. I usually make the shot. Wow. And so here we are, you know, and, and one of the things that we're teaching in 2022 going into 2023, whether it's a success summit seminar or it's my, you know, my social media success series is, you know, branding, social media. And you got all these people from a different generation that are constantly saying to themselves, oh, I'm not good at marketing. I'm not good at social media. I'm not good at tech stuff. And so one of the things that I do to help people get unstuck to get to the other side is we have them set goals. Like one of the goals I gave the group earlier today, you're going to make 20, 90 second or less videos between now and, and February or March. That's going to be a four month gap. I'm saying sit down, do five a, five a month. That's sitting down for an hour the first month, 30 minutes the second month, 30 minutes the third month. Batch these out, knock them out. Don't get caught up with how do I do a reel? How do I put the words? Yeah. You've got a 15-year-old that lives at your house for free that can figure that part out. But I got to get you in the habit of, of doing video. And that means I got to get you past your fear of, of the way you look, the way you sound. Because I tell everybody, I coach gorgeous people, I coach ugly people, they all feel the same way. <laughs> I don't like the way I look yeah. or sound, right? Ego, bro. Yeah. Right? Everybody's a little self-conscious. Oh, yeah. Even when they're living depends on it. So go back, though. Yeah. That's not like me. I usually make those. Yeah. So when you shoot out of bed in the morning, you said part of your f 59 minutes to terrific, right? Right. Is right away. It's this is my day. This right. is my year. LFG, let's go. Let's right. make it. Or do you, do you talk to yourself? And have you done that for a long time? Do you say think words out loud to yourself? Absolutely. Wow. You know, I'll jump out of bed. You know, it's so easy to lay there, to hit the hit the snooze button, to get up. I'm out of bed. I'm out the door. And since COVID, I lost I lost at least a half a dozen friends, you know, for one reason or another during COVID. And, um, you know, when you get my age, if you're not in the obituaries, you know, you're, you're grateful for it. You know, I turned 55 and... and uh, you know, so getting up and just embracing the day, you know, having that extra 59 minutes, you know, if, the, if you've got kids, get up an hour earlier, take care of you, you know, it, you can do this, quit making excuses. But I get up, I, you know, I, I say, hey, today's going to be a terrific day. You know, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. You know, I am responsible for success. You know, it's, it's your affirmations, they're embedded. Uh, I remember about 30 years ago when we had the, the, the cassette tapes. I don't know if you're old enough to remember. We yeah, had the cassette tapes. Yeah, Yeah, I would record these in my voice, and, and then it would be the affirmation. So I was, I'm driving around as I'm falling asleep. Money comes easy. Success is simple. You know, you're a closing machine. I'm a closing machine. You know, l silly stuff, but in my voice, it, the affirmations. You know, I, I work with salespeople. I train salespeople. I train business people. It's not just social media. It's sales skills. You know, they're like, oh, well, I'm not good at handling objections. I, I always forget to ask for referrals. No, it's that isn't like me. I usually ask for referrals. It's so simple. It's easy, but and, it's hard. And yet it's, it's, it seems like it's always maybe just a little out of, out of reach. What is it that most people don't realize about the power of social media? Is it that you just have to stay consistent? Is it that you have got to, no matter if it takes two cups of coffee, you got to bring the energy? What is it that people don't really realize about the power of social media? Because a lot of people try it. You see this. They make some posts. Maybe they get real caught up in the editing or the closed captioning or whatever of the post. The post gets like four likes and then they tap out right, and they right. bail. What is, what is it that most people don't realize about the power of social media? Well, that's a whole that's a whole day conversation. You that's, bet. <laughs> that's the success summit seminar. But but the short version is you know we teach a six step process. S step zero is, is is get your brand together. You know I mean I meet business people. Hey, you're a good guy. How do I stay? Are you more active on Facebook or Instagram? Well, I'm a little bit on both. Well, great. What's your handle? Well, over here, it's uh, CowboyFan94. Over here, mm. it's CamaroFan68. I'm like, stop. I go, you're a lender. We're going to name your profiles Terry Fannin Lender or Terry Fanner Mortgage. Why do I want to do that? Don't, do I just want to make it lending by uh, Terry? Well, A, that's not unique, and B, it's not SEO optimized. So we start with stuff like that. What are you going to name your profiles? I recommend the same thing, Facebook business page, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. Now they get their old-fashioned business cards printed. And right on there it says, follow me at. So all of a sudden, your customers that you've met with, your referral partners are like, hey, Jess is a great guy. I'm going to go ahead and take the time to look him up, see what he's up to. That's where it starts. And then you mentioned it, consistency. So part, you know, step two. Well, 
consistency doesn't help if you don't have the following. So you got to figure it out. I'd start, you know, everybody, I do business with my warm market. Great. Start connecting with your warm market. Right? Yeah. Number three, what are you going to post? Well, you got to post stuff that those people are interested in. And it's not necessarily a selfie of you. Right? right? <laughs> you know, it, you know, like, like, um, we're ba- like in my branding session, we talk about, you know, finding a niche and, you know, everybody's always a little pushback. Oh, I want to do what bi- I want to lend to everybody. I want to do I want to sell everybody a house. I can go. You could still do that, but you can recession proof your business by having a niche. You know, it's just in San Antonio. And I got to talking to this older guy. He goes, well, what do you think my niche should be? I said, tell me about yourself. Well, I was in the military for, you know, 25 years. You know, I, I uh, um I, I really like serving those people. I said, what, why do you like it? He goes, I click well with them. You know, I moved 18 times in my, my career. I know what those families are going through. I go, do you understand the programs that are available? He goes, yeah, I got programs I could get them into for 3% down and they don't know about it. I said, stop, your niche, it's clear as day, needs to be that you know you serve first responders and vets. But I want to sell to everybody. I go, no one's going to turn you down because that's your niche, but you're going to recession-proof your business. Then he goes, what do I need to do? Now we're at step three, content. You're going to go ahead and you're going to follow other veteran-owned businesses that have that audience, whether it's, you know, um, PenFed Mortgage or it's USHA. And and you're going to go ahead and be able to, as your business page, you're going to share that stuff and you're going to put out stuff that veterans care about. And I'm not just talking Memorial Day and Veterans Day, but some of the other things that are happening that veterans are interested in. You're going to tie yourself in with the charity and you're going to promote it. You know, maybe suicide prevention for veterans, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to, again, endear you to the people in the market that you're trying to attach. You're doing good. You're going to make yourself feel good. He goes, that's a great idea. And I go, but the most important thing is don't do it in a secret way. Let's get you over to the sign company. Let's get a dry erase check made and let's promote it. And now we're into the social media post. So it's, it, it all comes together. You're going to interview a loan officer about the, the different programs that they have available for vets that they may not know about. You're going to bring value to the community. Along the way, you're going to be tapping that loan officer's uh, database because he's done uh, 1,500 loans in the last 15 years. He's got already done the legwork, got them following, and now they're going to discover you. And then he's going to be at the country club with the loan officer and say, that guy you were talking to, that realtor guy, he seemed pretty sharp. You think I should list my house with him? And the loan officer is going to be not only that, have him represent you. He's a straight up guy and he's a great negotiator. And you're going to, you're going to bring in business. So it's more than just posting. But, but at the core of it, then, then it becomes the consistency. You know, the first thing I ask anybody in business when they say they failed with social media, do you have a social media calendar? Right. And nine times out of 100, it's no. We just kind of post when we feel like it. When we have extra time, I go, when do you have extra time? You go, that's the issue. Seriously. So, you know, you know what it is. It's consistency. It's, it's making your stuff look great. And then it's really understanding what, who your avatar is, who's on the other side. You know, on your side, you got local homeowners. You, got, you know, they got questions. You know, if I have a hailstorm, should I call the insurance guy? Should I call the roofer? What order? You know, it's your job to go out there and and let them know they got a friend in the roofing business. Yep, you know the business. Right. Yeah, And what we're doing right now, I mean, you know, I tell, you know, podcasting, video marketing, these things bringing value to the community. And they just realize, oh, wow, he's a roofer in in, in Dallas. I want to hook up with that guy. He's a pretty good guy. Do you think that, that you can be relevant in the sales and service industry without social media i mean it's almost 2023 i mean if you're trying to do that are you really you're making things real hard on yourself if you're not relevant if you're not even trying you know we talk about relevancy and and, you know the the younger your demographic gets the more important it is to have a presence you know i was in california speaking to the uh, san diego board of realtors they heard i was coming out to texas and they said if you find a good realtor let me know, because I have a lot of people relocating from California to Texas. I would ask people, well, I'll keep my eyes out. What are you looking for? What's important to you? The number one thing I heard, and it shocked me from agents that were under the age of 40, is that they're active on Instagram. Okay. And I looked at them, I said, what does that matter? Right. They said, well, if they're not on Instagram, they're not relevant. They wouldn't do a good job for my customer. It's impossible for them to sell the house for the most wow. money if they don't have a presence there. And you know what? After looking at the stats, I tend to agree. Wow. Like, it, you know, in Dallas, 
42% of the pr- pr- properties that were purchased last year were, were from that age bracket of 25 to 40. And they don't want to talk to us on the phone. They want to go ahead and research you, see what you're about. You know, are, are, are you doing, are you, are, are, you, are you transparent? Are you real? Are you just another one of the, the baby boomers, you know, trying to make money, you know? And, and that's what I hear from them. And you say, well, that's okay. You know, my clientele's older. Well, listen, that's 42% today. Where's that going to be in five years? 70%, 80%? That yeah. is your future. Yeah, that is the trajectory, right? So when someone goes on social media to research someone who's trying to sell them something, right? Right. They're looking for authenticity. And uh, if you're on there and you're consistent and you're disciplined and you do have a social media calendar, you've got alarms set on your phone, so you're posting at the right times of day and it's very easy to figure out when you should post, where you should post, all of that (laughs) is right here in the supercomputer on your hand or go to Steve's. Go to Steve's seminars. I'll give it right now. Yeah. Facebook, between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Highest engagement right Boom. there. <laughs> the uh, There's a lot of gurus out in the in the sales world that are yeah. talking about, hey, you got to make this about it's, it can't be transactional. It's got to be relational. And then you got people in sales who are like, well, you know, social's too hard. Or I think it's, it's a lot of p- puff and fluff, and yeah. I don't think it works. But that's what creates, even if it might be a slight illusion of relational, that is what creates that relational right. aspect where they see you with your kids. They see you with your dog. They see you at your recreational functions. They know you're a real person. That's right. Right? They know you have interests maybe outside of work. That f- shades in, colors in right. your personality. Right. So instead of it just being transactional, which most of your 25 to 40-year-olds don't want a transactional Got it. Relate. They want that relationship. You got it. Yeah. So social is if you're going to be relevant and you're in sales, it's 100 percent necessary. Is what I hear you saying. I, I think it is. I think it is. You know, especially when you're in, you're a lot of a lot of people, a lot of small, a lot of your viewers, a lot of people that you know you're, you're doing a roof for them every. 10 years. Right. You know, they're buying a house every five years. They're refining their mortgage every four years. There's this big, long gap from I love you, I'll do business with you, to I can't remember who, what your name is. But if you connect with your customers, you post consistently, consistently. Okay, on my Facebook personal, they ask me, how, how often should you post? I say three to, ten, three to 10 times a week. You know, you don't want to be the person that's doing too much, but you also don't want to be the person where they look you up and they think that the rumor that you died of COVID is true, right. you know? Yeah. So three to ten times, stay in the news feed. Instagram, it is imperative that you consistently post, as you know. Yeah. Otherwise, you fall outside the Instagram. There's misnomers. You know, people think, well, I'm going to just connect with people and post on my personal profile. Facebook just shows your stuff to about 7% of your friends. So let's say, oh, I'm good. I'm connected to 1,000 people. Well, they're showing it to the same 70, your mom, your best friend, your sister, not necessarily the customer you're trying to reach. So there's a balancing act between your personal and business. And, 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 the, and the, the sad thing is most people are learning from people at the water cooler. I had somebody come up to me the other day and go, well, I heard Facebook's, uh, this on Facebook doesn't work. I said, who'd you hear that from? And she, they, they said, Mark. I said, who's Mark? Oh, he works with me at the office. I said, let me ask you one question. Is he the top producer? She goes, no, he's broke like me. I I go, that's insanity. Do not listen to people that are not successful. Listen to the leaders. Listen to the gurus. Listen to the people that have done the research. I mean, I coach people, the best people in the world. And I have my eyeballs on their accounts. And I know, okay, that guru told you this this works? No, it doesn't. That's a blogging. That was a five-year-ago strategy. For you go out there and do a video, a reel today, you're going to get 97 times the result, right? I, I, and some of these topics are so easy. I, I like, um, you know, I, I was with the group of lenders. I'm going to just use this as an example. I said, what can we post? I go, well, why don't you just to educate people, bring value, be transparent. Why don't you just go out there and say, hey, thinking about buying a house, here's three things that the bank's going to look at. They're going to look at your credit. They're going to look at your assets. They're going to look at your income. So here's my advice for you. Stay at your job. Don't buy anything major, and make sure that you, you, you know that uh, you got you, you've got a clean list of your assets. And, and the, the kid went out there. This other guy in, in Vegas, his name's Ricky. He went out there. He got eighty eight hundred views on that because he did it right. He did it with captions. He did a ninety second or less reel on a topic that he was interested. It in. didn't put a dime into it, but because he did it as what Facebook, what the networks want, he got as close to free advertising as you could get. Got over 8,800 views. 
Yeah, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. So when you're trying to coach somebody, yeah. right, we can um, – I'm sure you came up in athletics as well, right? Uh, the best coaches to me were the ones that broke me down. They could see what I was good at, and right. they put me in this position to excel at that. Right. They didn't go, you suck at this, Jess, and so you have to concentrate on that. Like now, it. we always worked on our weaknesses, right? right? Let's think together, right? So – you're getting into social. You want to sell. The videos are obviously hot because TikTok is absolutely devouring the rest of the marketplace right. because of the videos. Right. 90 seconds or shorter. Why couldn't I, if I wanted, you're a golfer, straightest route to the pin, right? Nine iron, just straight. I want to, I want the fastest route to the pin. Yeah, I put a little loft on it, though. Please. Maybe yeah, a little. I don't, want it, got, I don't want it hot, I want too pa- hot. Power, brother, <laughs> power. Why can't I do that video, okay? It's a person like, hey, what's going on? It's Jess. I'm with Autograph Construction. I'm here to help you. Has your insurance claim been denied? Or did they tell you that what it was going to take to repair isn't even going to come close to what it is? I'm here to help you. This is what I can do. This is how I can do it. Why couldn't I take that video, make it look a little nicer? Yes, I can add the captions. I can reel that on Instagram. I can TikTok that on TikTok. I can short that on my YouTube channel. I can post that in my Facebook stories or as a Facebook post. And I could text that to all of my warm leads or my prospects. Perfect. Great strategy. Even if it's something they've already heard from me, they see me again and I'm talking and it's more effective than just a photo is, right? Because if photos were all we needed, Instagram would still be running away with the game, and they're right. not. Because right. everyone realizes that videos are so much more personal. Right. You say you feel like you get to know the person more. Don't you think that's just a simple way? You now repurposing a 90-second video like you challenge your people. How, how many did you say? I want 20 in four months, right? So I want five per month is what you said you challenged your folks right. with today. right. That's a lot of posts, right? Or a lot of follow-ups. So if that was five video or 20 videos and you're putting that in five places, that's a hundred touches. So if you are, is it important? Um, I didn't even let you answer because I know we got to go and you're, uh, you're, no, I'm good. you're, I'm good. you're, I'm good. Uh, you're just a, a wealth of, of knowledge. Yeah, is it important? Well. Can you over, can you over follow up with a prospect? Is there such a thing as over following up and, just a little piggyback there. Is it better when you follow up to ask them a question that they can answer easily? I know the advice I give after years of selling or whatever, but what's your advice about following up? How do you mean? I, you lost me a little bit. Well, let's say you're trying to sell me a roof. Okay. You're trying to get me to sign with you, okay. sign your claim to me. I'm gotcha. I'm the pro. Yeah. Um, how many times are you going to follow up with me? And how are you going to follow up with me? Let's just break this down to text messages. Right. Are you going to send me a Giphy? Are you going to send me a funny meme? Are you going to say, hey, Jess, it's Steve Black here with Autograph Construction. We are the best in the business. If you hired someone else, I understand. Did you hire another contractor? Because then if all I have to do is say yes to get you out of my hair, right. at least I cross you off the list right. and I'm swiping again on Tinder. Right, right. How do you how do you recommend following up if people are in sales? Well, you know, every situation is different, but you know, so much so much business is being transacted. We talk about the difference post COVID. There's been a consumer yeah. behavior change. I see it across every industry. My industry, less people want to come into a room, more people want to do the virtual program from their living room, right? I, I So you bring them what they want. Um, but, you know, with so much business being done virtual, like a little simple thing everybody could do, they could record a video on it for inquiries. Let's say you got a website, you're doing Angie's List, they're doing Realtor.com. So they got one video, it, they did it right, maybe they had to do three takes. Hey, this is Steve Black, I want to, I appreciate your inquiry. If you'll check your inbox, uh, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll have the, the answers that you were looking for. I just wanted to put an, a face with the name. I'm here for you, this is my private cell number. Feel free to text me or call me. I'm happy to answer your questions, whether you end up going with us or anybody else. Boom. Wow. You know, so now you're now I'm sending him a text. I'm saying here's a little video that's message. Getting, that's gonna get viewed. Well, not only no, this is a one to one situation. Yeah. True. You know, you, yeah. yeah. So if you if you were to inquire, I'd say, Hey, thanks for I, but I've gotcha. recorded the video and I'm sending it to a thousand people, yes. but you don't know that. Right. So it's going to be, hey, Straight I'm inquiring the about the Success Summit seminar. How is it? Well, I appreciate your inquiry. Here's it. You can gotcha. learn more at our website. We do have a coupon code available. Just go ahead and, and text me, and I'll get you that code if you're interested. And you start the process up. But um, you know, a lot of times, follow-up, 
you know, four, five, six times. Most salespeople, it's pathetic. They stop it at one or two. Is that the stat? Really? Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. We were, I was recently trying to uh, get somebody to help me in the financial world. I called three different people. All three of them neglected to even call me back. One called me back. We scheduled an initial consultation. I sent him everything he needs. It was a fairly large transaction for them and didn't have the courtesy to get back to me. It just shocks me how bad some of the business people are out there on their follow-up. So do what you say you're going to do. Do it in a timely manner. And then bring things in. You know, I have students who are using BombBomb to dr deliver video emails, similar to what I said. But you don't necessarily have to subscribe to that program. It's a great program, and it shows you who opened it. And, you know, it's a shiny object. If you're going to use it, use it consistently and have your marketing team use it. But don't subscribe and don't use it. But just record a video, text it. Now they have a name with the face. And then you get a text. Hey, bud, uh, sorry I didn't follow up. Um, you know, I interviewed a few people. I think I might have made the wrong decision. Do you know anything about this guy? And you're like, hey, I gotta be, I, I you know, I, I don't like to talk bad, but you know, if, I'll, I'll give you a hint. Just look, uh, Google BBB and Google him, and you'll see what other people say. You know, if I want to get out of it, how could I do it? Well, this is what you might. These are some options, and if you need me to come in and maybe write you a letter, I'll be happy to do it. And you're on your way to building trust. Now, you may not get that sale. You may not earn a commission. But guess who he's referring his business to? Hey, I made the wrong choice. I wouldn't go with that guy again. But I met a guy, Jess, and I recommend you go with him. I love that. And that also harkens back to you already lost that sale once, right? Because he just told you I signed with someone else. I think I might have made a mistake. When you did, when, it, when he told you, Steve, I signed with somebody else, you did not come back at him with an F you. That's totally <laughs> uncool, right? You don't burn that bridge. Oh, right? Boy. We burn the ships, but we build the bridges around here, right? So he felt free enough to come back to you and that you weren't going to shame him. Oh, told, yep, you didn't hire me. I mean, right. that's, you're in a position that you, you made the bed, sleep in it. So nobody wants to buy from someone who shames them at all, right? right? That right. all needs to be a positive. Ex so when someone tells you, I took my business elsewhere, how do you respond to oh, it? I, I, I say, hey, well, thanks, thanks for, uh, I wish you the best of luck, good luck in all things. I always close with good luck in all things. I want to relieve that tension. You know, depending on the client, most of my clients, you know, my corporate clients, I write them a thank you note when they say no. And it's not thank you for wasting my time. It's thank you for the opportunity. If you have needs in the no future. No snarky. Here, boom. No... No, I told you so. No guilt trips. None of that. None of that stuff. At the Success Summit seminar, I, te I teach a technique. It's called thanks, thanks a million. And all the young people love it because they've never been exposed to it. You know, hmm. the old guys like me, we grew up, write a thank you note to people that sell, you sell to. I say write a thank you note to people that say no as well. Like in the real estate niche, they write a thank you note to somebody that says, no, I'm going to go with my cousin who got their license. It sits on the market for three months. They're calling you back versus the other two agents they know because you showed that you, you cared. Yep. And then what I, what I teach them to do when they have a good client, write a thank you note and include a lottery ticket. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's either a scratch off or it's a lottery ticket. Follow it up with a phone call. This is thanks a million. And I learned this from somebody that was in the a, a, a heating and air conditioning business. Wow. She was not the sharpest tool in the shed, but she had built the dominant company up in Maryland for heating and air. And I said, what's your secret? And she says, I, I, for, for 30 years, every time someone buys from us, I write them a thank you note and I slip a lottery ticket in. It allows them to fantasize oh. about winning. They, uh, I, have them, I do a follow-up text or call, tell them to check their mailbox, and they always write back, thank you. That was very nice of you. And they solidify that relationship. That's amazing. You uh, talked earlier about the reading as part of your morning right. routine, right? That's important for personal growth reading. Right. A lot of people get out of high school or college and never crack a book again. Are you familiar with Robert Greene, 48 Laws? of power, et cetera. Are you familiar with him I, as an I, I've author? I've heard it. I, that's not, I'm going to add that one to my list. Amazing so. guy. Yeah. That book is War okay. and Peace. It's very long. Okay. I think it's like a nine-hour listen on Audible, okay. but he okay. has several others. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mastery is excellent. The Art of Seduction, awesome. which is about sales. It's not about getting people to sleep with you. Anyways, he talks about how we make a decision on someone within like the first five to ten seconds of meeting them. That's true. So let's let's take today, for example. You walk up the, the stairs. Uh, we got a little switched on which building, right? But you walk right up the stairs, broad shoulders, open, right? Body body language, right. Steve Black, right? Oh, okay. So the decision, I don't know how I presented, but it's probably something similar. Smile, right. energy, bringing it. Thank you for your right. time. 
Do you believe that that's true? That in sales, people are making their decisions, especially if you meet them face to face, you have got to arrive. You have to look the part, sound the part, smell the part. You you have to be the show when you meet someone in person to present yourself as I'm the best realtor. I'm the best roofer. I'm the best hitman. Whatever service you're selling them, right. you have got to arrive and put on that that face. Is that important in your opinion? Do you teach that? Absolutely. You know, and, 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 you know, when we talk, you know, traditional sales, step, step one, get in rapport with people. It's look them in the eye. It's the handshake. It's the smile. It's your presence, uh, you know, in the, in, in the trades, you know, I, I, I've helped companies, you know, re redesign what they do. They want their techs out there selling. They want, you know, the plumber, he wants to take his average ticket from, you know, 150 to 400, but he's got guys with dirty shirts showing up, you know, the, the, the lady of the house doesn't want to be in the house with them. So, so they work through their branding. They work through their social media. It starts with a well-pressed shirt, you know, it's tucked in and then, you know, they're laying things down the house looks better when they came in and then they're taking the they're getting video testimonials from the customers that are talking exactly about that hey we had a wonderful experience with john's plumbing the rep showed up on time he presented himself well he cleaned up and he got the job done right and all of a sudden because even though john was 20 percent more it didn't matter because the service was there and and but you got to walk your talk you know if you're the best barbecue in town it better be good barbecue because people are going to talk but how do you use social media you could amplify it you know you get written testimonials video testimonials I would tell every business owner that's listening to us, get two testimonials in the next three months from in the next 30 days from your, your clients. When you're with somebody, give them a heads up. Blame it on me. Hey, I'm working with this guy, Steve Black, Coach Steve. He challenged me to get a video. I know you can't do it today, but next week I'm going to see you. I just want to give you a heads up. I'm asking you to do a quick video. And then it's like, what do you want me to say? Just say that, hey, we were on time. We weren't the lowest price, you're, but you're glad you went with us because the service was outstanding. You know, I'm your roofer for life. And you know what? It's worth a million bucks if you do it right. Yeah, it yeah. sells itself. Are you always networking? I mean, if you're at the bar tonight, are you talking to the person next to you while you're eating your, your smoked salmon and using forum on them, right? Family, occupation, yeah. recreation, yep. motivation. Are, are you always doing that? Or do you have some shutdown time where it's just to yourself? Or if you're in public, do you are you pretty much always on? Uh, a little bit of all of it, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the guy out there always looking for business. I'm gonna get to know people as people if I'm at the bar. But it is gonna be the family occupation, uh, recreation. You know, Zig taught me. You know, listen. God gave you two ears, one mouth. Did it for a reason, so you listen twice as much as you talk. And you know. And, and people notice it. You know, I'll be with a group of people and I'll start a conversation. I'll say, I like, really liked how you did that. And I'll say, well, I read this book or I took this class. You might want to look at it. And, and, and there's nothing. And, you know, then another thing is, you know, personality types. You know, one of the things that, I, that we teach and, and it is, is, is ex expansion of what the disc profile is. And, you know, you, you, you sound like you've, you're very trained in sales. And you, know, you got people that are either very outward or they're reserved. You know, they're more logical or they're people oriented. Well, naturally, you're going to get along well with the people that, that are like you. You know, like I could already tell, we get along good. You know, we're both outgoing. We both like people. We both like marketing. You know, we can leave here and go have a beer and have a good time. But, you know, there, there's the comp troller that might, might run this place. And, you know, he didn't, you know, he, he doesn't want to look me in the eye, doesn't shake my hand. It doesn't mean he doesn't like me, but I have to recognize what I'm dealing with. You know, with an analytical personality, I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to give them the data they want. And then, you know what? If they want more data, I'm going to give it to them. You know, with, with a salesperson, the gal today I was, that signed up for my program, I looked at her. I gave her her ticket for the Success Summit seminar, and I said, take a picture of it. She goes, yeah, I'll lose it. I could tell right away. <laughs> That she was what I call the I personality, you yeah. know? She wants people, hey, I'm going for a latte, where'd I put my purse? And I, I but I recognize that at fun. And my clothes on her wasn't gonna make money. I'm gonna go, it's gonna be fun and you're gonna meet a lot of people. She goes, that makes sense. You know, so you gotta learn to sell different people different ways. You know, I'm gonna sell Ross Perot differently than I would a nurse or teacher. And and when you understand who you are and how what those people's triggers are, you can triple your sales just with that. So I hope I've given your, your listeners some value today and Absolutely. given them some nuggets. Yeah. yeah. And if uh, other entrepreneurs, biz business owners, or people who run business for business owners want a more effective sales staff, how can you help them? 
you know, we help in a variety of ways. You know, if they ever see one of the success summit seminars, those are terrific. Um, our company for qualified groups and, and the qualification, you know, 10 or more salespeople, we could do a live virtual session. I probably won't even charge you to, you know, to open the relationship. We'll just fire up a Zoom. I'll spend an hour as your speaker for the sales meeting or one of my team will. Um, our, uh, our most popular program nowadays with people's busy schedules is the so business and social media success series where we get together live on Zoom once a month. Uh, we always have a different topic. Last month was TikTok. The month before we were talking about reels and how to leverage them. Um, this, this month we're doing Google My Business. So it's always topics uh, like a cafe, a cafeteria that some people are gonna you know, like more than others, but it's all really good stuff that people need to know. Um, if they miss those sessions, they're recorded. Um, there's an option with that to do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with myself or one of the coaches where we look at their stuff. We say, you're doing this right. This needs to switch. Mm -hmm. People tell us that that is just alone is, is, is priceless. And, um, you know, we give them the tools, the templates to make their stuff look good and their social media calendars. And um, we're running a special uh, for your, 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 your listeners where if they want to participate, you know, it's 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 a fraction of what the public pays to be a part of it. So if they're interested in it, is it okay to throw out the website? Hundred percent. So um, they would just go to successadvice.com. That's www.successadvice.com. Um, it, it, there there will be a ninety percent off offer there. Wow. So that you know, our program might be like for three years. You know, normally like five thousand dollars. I think they've got the three year program up there for under six hundred bucks, and that's not per month. That's a one time investment, so that, that we can get them help. We can make their stuff look good. We can give them everything they need, and. Um, Wow, that's might amazing. even have a chance to get on a Zoom with me. So yeah. I'd, love, I'd love to meet some of your listeners in either that way or through the one of the live events. Absolutely. And if uh, somebody who's watching or listening is in sales and they can walk with one tip from you today, is it listen more? Is it be more energetic? Is it be more consistent? Is there one just like the first step to being better at closing more deals? It's Take the brakes off. You know, mm. you're in it to win it. Give yourself every edge you can. It's all the things you said. Listen more than you talk. Ask for the order. Quit asking people what they think. Instead, say, what would you like most about what we discussed? Do you have any questions? Mm. If you don't have any questions, the next step is I can have my crew out here uh, you know, next Wednesday or we could come out next Thursday, which, which would be better for you. If we did move forward, would it be during office hours? You want us to do it after hours? You know, maybe you bring in an alternative cho of, 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 of choice close. And, you know, just quit asking people, do you want to buy? But give them reason to buy and then know how to close the sale. Not what you think. Yeah. What would you like most? What would you like most? Steve Black. Thank hey, you, brother. Appreciate it. your time. That was an awesome action-packed hour. I hope you learned about recession-proofing your business, about the power of social media and the absolute necessity of it. You should get with Steve if you want him to come speak at your at your business event, speak to your sales team, uh, Steve Black Speaker on Instagram. Also have all of his links and connection information here below. Love to know what you think about the Jess Marshall Podcast. I enjoy shooting these. I learn a lot about people. I stay really inspired and motivated when I hear their story. Steve's got an awesome story. Uh, you should get with that with him about his personal story of overcoming grief and tragedy. Um, pretty amazing how almost every single podcast guest over the last like two or three months has all talked about positive self-talk that they actually talk out loud to themselves i've started doing that you should try it it works it's worked for me i'd love to know what you think about the jess marshall podcast and if you've got something that somebody that you think i should talk to for sure connect me you can always hit me up anytime on instagram and on tiktok at jess from the northwest and we'll see y'all next time for jmp number 71